everybody! I am Nico D. So last week I received the Oldroid N2 Plus. I must thank all my subscribers who helped me to buy this. I am very happy with it, it's a monster. So today we are gonna watch some of the gameplay on Emu Elec. Emu Elec is according to me the best emulation image. I also tried Batocera but there were a lot of problems with it, with the display resolution. I couldn't lower the display resolution from 4K. So a lot of games didn't work well on it. In Emu Elec this isn't a problem, you can change the display resolution in Emu Elec itself or with the config.ini file. So all you have to do is download Emu Elec, burn it onto an SD card or eMMC, start it with the Oldroid N2 Plus. Once it started you can shut it down again and then you can copy all the files to the storage partition. Be sure to also copy the BIOS files to the ROMs slash BIOS folder. So let's start with some old games. So here is a Sega Master System with Spider-Man. So of course all the Sega Master System, SNES, NES, Mega Drive, all those games work great on it. This will not have any problems with any of those. Here is Afterburner 2 for the Mega Drive. Or Genesis. It is the Mega Drive you know. So now let's go to Nintendo 64. Nintendo 64 is a lot harder to emulate. If you have problems with the game, change your emulator and it probably will be fine. All the games I tried for Nintendo 64 worked well, but sometimes I had to change emulators to make it work well.
if Nintendo 64 games work great on it, then of course PlayStation 1 games work well on it too. So here is Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. All MAME games that I tried worked great on it, so here is Afterburner for MAME. One thing that doesn't work great on Emo like is PSP games. Some work great, some others don't. Like here for example Toka Racing 2, there is a lot of artifacting with it. I also tried it with Batocera, there it works perfectly, but you need a 1080p display. This because you cannot lower your display resolution, even with the config.ini file. So with a 4K display it always will output 4K, or with a 1440p display Batocera will always output 1440p.
So as you see, most of the PSP games run great, but some do have problems. The CPU is more than powerful enough for it, that is a fact. So now as last, let's go to Dreamcast games. So these also run great on it, but some do have a problem. Some have a sound problem, but most games run great on it. So with that you can see that this CPU is more than powerful enough to play these games. I am amazed about how well these games do run. These aren't that simple to emulate. So for an ARM SBC this is great. I also tried Android. I will make another video about Android, about Galvanized. One problem I have there is that my controller doesn't work. If anybody has any tips for it, let me know. But otherwise that Android version is very good. You know I don't like Android, but that one is very good. And later on I will make a Linux review for it. Most of the Linux distros don't have the correct clock speeds for the N2 Plus yet. Only the Ubuntu's from Android themselves. So I will wait a little bit until I can test it on other distros also. So Emu Elec really runs great on the Odroid N2 Plus. I'm very happy to have the N2 Plus clock speeds. With Batocera this isn't possible yet, but it does run on it with the clock speeds of the Odroid N2. So the Odroid N2 Plus can be clocked to 2.4 GHz with the big cores. That is quite a change compared to the 2 GHz of the Odroid N2. So for some games this can give a nice boost. For DOSBox this is really great. I already tried DOSBox, I will show that in another video. I've never seen DOSBox run that good on an ARM SBC. So that's it for today, I hope you all liked my video, thank you all for watching, please subscribe to my channel, see you all later, bye!